what's in a name? Those four words are famously written in a quote by William Shakespeare in Romeo and Juliet. Juliet would suggest that what's in a name? Very little, if anything at all. There is nothing really in a name. I would argue that what's in a name is everything. Names and words shape and form our identity as soon as we hear them about ourselves. They are names that we use to describe us, and they're also words that we take on that other people use to describe us. The force of those words, we can decide whether or not they will attach to us, whether they will define us. So I take issue respectfully with, with Juliet. <laughs> so when we think about names, what usually will come to mind first and fo foremost is our first and our last name the names that we were given at birth. So my name given at birth by my parents who moved to this country as immigrants from Haiti is Marie Joanne Beauvoir. French was my first language and we spoke French in my home growing up in addition to English and Haitian Creole. So Marie, which is Marie, that was attached to what most of you would consider my first name, which is Joanne. But in my family, not only was I Marie, but so were my sisters. So Marie Sandra, Marie Joanne, which is me, and my younger sister, Marie Marjorie. When I was born, the nurse asked my mother, are you sure you want to do that? It's going to be really confusing. You sure? <laughs> and my mother, in her rich, beautiful French accent, looked back at the nurse and said, yes, this is how we name our children. It represents my culture. And so for me, I have held on to Marie. It is in my legal name. It is in my legal signature because it is part of my culture. Joanne. Joanne, I have always had a love-hate relationship with this name, okay? I understand that from the get-go. <laughs> to the point that when I was in elementary school, I changed the spelling of it because I was convinced that what you saw on paper as Joanne didn't ring and resonate with how my parents called me at home, which was Joanne. So I changed the spelling of it thinking I was just really genius. I was like, I'm going to make it phonetically appear the way my parents say, my name. Until the day my father saw my newly spelled name on a homework assignment, and he was like, stop it. <laughs> Change it back. Change it back. So it is, as you see it in the program, J-O-A-N-N-E, Joanne. I've never attached any meaning to that name. Beauvoir, Beauvoir. That's the name that I was given. That's the name that I was born into. But I didn't really know what it meant. It was a French name, a name that a lot of people had a hard time pronouncing. But for me, it represented just a last name. No different than Jones or Smith or Brown, the name that I would actually later take on as my married name. Until, at the age of eight years old, I was in third grade, I had to get my hearing and eye test at school. Yes, a hundred years ago, we did hearing and eye tests at school and not at the pediatrician's office. A woman was going to come and take me out of my class and bring me to that appointment. I should have known from the moment that she said my name that something different was going to happen that day. When she called me by my name, she said, Joanne Beauvoir. I actually didn't have to correct her. She knew how to say my name. 
So I followed her out of the classroom, walked down the hall with her to the room where the testing would take place, and she stopped me before we went into the room. And she said, do you know what your name means? And I looked at her and I'm like, oh, which one? Like Joanne or Beauvoir? And she says, Beauvoir, do you know what that means? And I felt a little silly at eight years old. I'm thinking, should I? I don't know, it's just my last name. And she said, Beauvoir. Beau means beautiful and voir means to see. Beauvoir, beautiful to see. Joanne, you are beautiful to see. And my eight-year-old chest almost, my eight-year-old heart almost bursted out of my chest. Me, beautiful to see? My name has been telling me that every single day? I didn't know that. I should have, but I didn't. And even then, with that great revelation, it would take me years to fully embrace that. So from eight years old to the fabulous 56-year-old who stands before you today, <laughs> I had many other names that I chose to put on my identity. I had many other names and words rather than the one that I was born with that I ascribed to, that I used to define who I was. Things like, you're skinny, you're kind of awkward, you're boyish, you're too black, you aren't white, you're not white enough. Are you American? That's a really weird last name. Your elbows and your knees are darker than other parts of your body. You know, there's a cream that you can put on your skin that will even that out and maybe even lighten your skin a little bit. And the winner is Mrs. International. You are Mrs. International. And yet, no one who looked like me wore that crown when I wore that crown. And so it took years to peel back those layers of words and names that I had allowed to force themselves onto me as part of my identity, as part of who I was. Even though at eight years old, someone had clearly told me that I was beautiful to see. Now, what was interesting about the woman that told me this revelation is that she was an older white woman. And it's not that I needed her affirmation to believe that I was beautiful, but you need to understand that in the 1970s, there wasn't anyone in the majority space in media and, and magazines that reflected that someone that looked like me was beautiful. And so hearing that from someone who looked like her at eight years old made me feel seen, made me feel a little bit more visible and perhaps a little more beautiful. So as I peeled those layers back, peeled those layers back, I made more room to take on what this woman had shared with me when I was eight years old. Not because what she said, was what I had to believe, and it's not because I have worn crowns and sashes that would say to the world that she, we have identified her as someone who is beautiful, but because finally I believed that I am beautiful, that I had to make room and take away all of those words and names that had attached themselves and peel them off make room for what was hanging right in front of me, which was Beauvoir, beautiful to see, and take that on as my own because I believed it and because I wanted to believe that. So what's in a name? 
everything. As little or as much meaning as you want to give those names and words. So hello, I am Marie-Joanne Beauvoir Brown. What's your name? Thank you.